Do do de. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. The Machines of War have been fully announced and will be released via a new type of game event called Incursions. I'll cover Incursions separately in another video, largely because there is plenty to talk about and analyze for the initial wave of Machine of War releases. You'll be familiar by now with the three Machines of War, but in case you aren't, they are shown here on screen. The goal from the designers is to give every faction a Machine of War eventually, but this is our initial selection choice. This screen here illustrates just how resource intensive it is to upgrade these machines. It's obviously not the same progression system as it is to upgrade traditional characters, but taking an ability to level 50 requires the same 10 legendary badges, some legendary forge badges, as well as diamond 3 components. Clearly the machines have value, but choosing the wrong one or progressing the wrong one can be quite costly. So that's the purpose and impetus behind this video, to share my thoughts, analysis and insight into who I believe is the best initial choice to focus on. The elephant in the room is around the primary ability relying on consumable ammunition. No one, apart from the developers, knows how the economy for the ammunitions will play out. They could be as prevalent as raid tickets, or as scarce as Blackstone. Time will tell. So for our analysis, we'll initially rank and compare just by secondary ability use, and then add in the primary ability to see if the rankings change. I'll also show you which character abilities work and affect the machines of war. Lots to get through, so let's get stuck in. The Malleus Rocket Launcher is a field ordnance battery that functions as the machine for the Astra Militarum. It has a primary ability, Malleus Rocket Barrage. This starts on a one turn cooldown. When it is usable, the Malleus marks a hex on the battlefield. After one turn, the Malleus launches a total of 12 rockets. Three hit the marked hex, and the remaining nine are randomly assigned to the surrounding hexes. Each hit does blast damage and suppresses the target. The final bit of text explains how the ability does bonus damage if there are Astra Militarum nearby. It's worth reminding ourselves that the machines have abilities that cost consumable munitions. This is the consumable ability for the Malleus. Each use will cost you a munitions charge. The secondary ability for Malleus is Forward Spotter. This is pretty straightforward. After an initial two turn cooldown, the Malleus can start spawning Cadian Guardsmen every turn. These are similar, but not identical to the Guardsmen spawned by equivalent level Yarrick and Creed, and as they are units on the battlefield, function and behave like other Guardsmen. That is to say, they can benefit from things like Eldrion's buff, Yarrick's passive, Kalgar's passive, and so on. The Forge Fiend is up next. It is a daemon engine for the Black Legion faction. Its primary ability is Hades Auto Cannon. This deals flame damage to target enemy summon and all enemy summons within two hexes of that initial target. It also has a chance to add critical hit damage, and there is no initial cooldown for this ability. The secondary ability is Daemonic Ordnance. This applies the fire hex effect to a target hex which has an enemy on it as well as the two hexes behind it, forming a sort of triangle shape. If the hex is already on fire, then it deals plasma damage to the affected hexes as well. Repeated uses of this secondary ability increase the critical hit chance of the Forge Fiend, allowing it to critical hit three times per battle. It's also worth noting that this secondary ability starts on cooldown for one round. The Biovore is a living artillery organism for the Tyranid faction. Its primary ability is Bio Minefield. The majority of the time this is going to spawn three spore mines on the battlefield in hexes adjacent to an enemy on the map. If there are already three spore mines in the battlefield, they then move towards the target. Spore mines are a new unit in the game. They are summoned units with the instinctive behavior trait and flying. They normally have a movement speed of 1, however if they are within synapse range then this increases to a movement speed of 2. Their key ability is floating death. This is what gives the unit the feel of an explosive mine. When the spore mine attacks or is defeated, then it deals toxic damage to all adjacent enemies. The mine does not explode when overkilled. The primary ability starts on a one turn cooldown. The Biovore's secondary ability is more straightforward and simply adds a single spore mine to the battlefield with each use, under the caveat that this hex is not adjacent to an enemy. Before we can compare them, we need to understand what abilities work and don't work with the Machines of War. By that I mean we need to understand if the damage they do is buffed by character passives. In this first clip, the Malleus active does not gain any bonus damage from Eldrion's passive. 
as it stands off the map, it is similarly unable to be buffed by Aethana's passive aura. We can apply the same logic and say that passives like Kalgar, Dark Strider, Shadow Sun, and the Ilk, which apply on adjacency basis, have no effect on the machines of war. What about other, more conditional and new instabilities? Here we can see that Roswitha's active ability does indeed increase the damage dealt by the Malleus Battery, likely because it is a damage modifier rather than adding to the Damvar calculation. We've been told that the machines of war are usable in guild raids, guild war, some modes in tournament arena, as well as traditional arena. For guild war, they'll only be able to be used once on offense and once on defense. For Tournament Arena, this is an event that rolls around once every couple of weeks and isn't to everyone's tastes or fancy. Arena is an evergreen mode, but I would argue this is relatively straightforward. You simply let the enemy walk to you so that you get the first turn of combat action, and you almost always win. So while there are definitely some PvP elements to consider, it probably makes more sense to assess how the machines will function in guild raids in the first instance. For the purposes of math and analysis, let's look at how each Machine of War fares against Legendary 5 Guild Raid bosses. As a quick nod to the Disgruntled, I understand that no one will have their Machines of War maxed out, but I've chosen level 50 skills and Legendary 5 bosses just to standardize the analysis. On this slide, a quick reminder of Damvar and how damage is calculated. For the Malleus, the secondary ability spawns Guardsmen. At level 50, the Guardsman does 2,394 damage, has two hits, and has a Laz attack, which does 10% pierce. When we apply the Damvar formula against an average Legendary 5 boss armor after the Primes have been defeated, the Guardsmen do 2,054 damage per turn. We can remind ourselves that we cannot use the secondary ability until round 3, since it starts in a 2 round cooldown, so the cumulative damage from the Guardsmen over a 6 round Guild Raid fight works out at 20,540. This assumes that none of the Guardsmen die, of course, but I think the math gets slightly more interesting than that. We've already been over the abilities and how they are impacted by character skills, however the Guardsmen function just like other summons in the battlefield. What I'm trying to say is that these units can benefit from things like Eldrion's passive, Kalgar's passive, Aethana's passive, high ground bonuses, and so on. Just by applying Eldrion's passive bonus, the damage potential from each Guardsman basically doubles. We can do the same exercise for the Forge Fiend and the Biovore, and this is what the numbers look like. A quick note on some conditional things. The Forge Fiend requires flame damage, so let's assume for this analysis that it is paired with a Psyker team, who has Ariman or Abraxas to set hexes on fire. For this math, I've also assumed that the Forge Fiend has done the three critical hits that it can do per battle. The Biovore can't deal any damage on turn one due to the fact that the mines cannot attack and explode straight away. So the numbers here are totaled for rounds 2 to 5. We can see at first glance that the Forge Fiend comes out on top, followed by the Biovore and then the Malleus's Guardsman. However, let's recall that both the Guardsman and the Spore Mines are summons, therefore gain bonuses from things like Eldrion's passive. Once we add Eldrion's passive into the mix, the Malleus's Guardsman are miles better than the other two machines of war when we look at just the secondary abilities. So, if we're looking for the most impactful machine in guild raids simply on the basis of secondary abilities, then you'll want to take the Malleus. Let's add another layer to the equation and look at the contentious primary abilities. This will require consumable munitions, but we don't know the economy on this at the moment. Really, here it is a comparison between the Malleus and the Biovore, as the Forge Fiend's primary ability does not damage non-summoned units. The Malleus's damage for its primary ability is capped out at 3 hits. For this comparison, we have used the primary ability every single turn that we are able to. We've also used the Malleus alongside Astra Militarum units, which allow it to get a bit of extra damage. We can see here how the Biovore comes out on top, slightly, but both of these comparisons require the Machines of War to use their active every single turn, which can consume several munitions per Guild Raid ticket. We don't know the economy of munition release, but I suspect this level of use will not be sustainable nor pragmatic. It also relies on the spore mines not being killed before they explode, which is not something to take for granted, given how basically all of the bosses do area of effect damage. There is a small bit of extra text or bonus to the Malleus active that I want to quickly point out. It might seem at first glance that the Forge Fiend is the more suited machine of war to accompany the Psyker team due to the damage requisite of flame hexes.
However, the Malleus Active importantly does suppression damage, so in addition to dealing a load of damage, it can also be used to add a Nero Parasite stack. Clearly it's not just about damage to the bosses though. The Forge Fiend being able to kill summons has a lot of value. Rogal Dorn, the Avatar of Cain, and Gazgul all have annoying summons that the Forge Fiend's active ability can help with. There are also boss primes like Sybil and Corodius, who can create waves of summons every turn, and the Forge Fiend machine can really ramp up damage output there. What about other uses and considerations? The Biovore has additional value that may be complex and hard to tease out. We know that unit placement can affect boss behaviour, and it may be that the cleverest players are able to learn and use this spore mine placement to manipulate boss behaviour to their advantage. PvP is an entirely different ballpark, and it is difficult to concretely compare the three machines here. They all have situationally different values. Malleus can help you deal with overwatch teams or teams that are turtling in a defensive formation through its active ability. The additional Guardsman effect is slow and less relevant for PvP where the battles are often decided in just a few turns. The Forge Fiend's primary ability is really only useful against summoner compositions in PvP. You'll struggle to get consistent use out of its secondary ability unless you're using the Forge Fiend in a flame team. Ironically, this engine is part of the Black Legion faction, but has no inter-faction synergy. None of the Black Legion can produce flame attacks. In a lot of ways, we can think of the Forge Fiend as being an excellent counter to some specific characters like Snotflogger and his annoying spam of Grots. The Biovore is really interesting from a PvP point of view. The mines provide obstacles to enemy progression and movement. It's reasonably easy to overkill the Spore Mines with equally leveled characters, so expect them to do less damage but rather be more positional in value. So in summary, from a guild raid focus point of view, the Malleus comes out trumps overall. It is going to give you consistent damage against all bosses and I think is the safest, most universally reliable choice. There is potentially some value for the Biovore, but I think the damage is less reliable than the math suggests, simply because the raid bosses will be using area of effect attacks often and overkilling the spore mines. The positioning nuance that the additional spore mines give you is not to be understated, but probably something that will only be of benefit to more advanced players who have a deeper understanding of boss mechanics. For PvP, I think all of the machines are comparable. Still, I don't think that PvP should dictate machine choice for the reasons I outlined earlier. Personally, I'm going to be picking the Malleus Battery for my first incursion, and hopefully this video explains why. That's all I've got for today. If you found this video useful, I'd love if you could consider entering my referral code as seen on screen. It earns you 100 Blackstone and supports me in the work that I do. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Finally, if you're interested in joining a competitive cluster of top guilds, reach out to us in the Eye of Terror Discord linked below. Lots of great players and fun to be had. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi!